And we're back, guys. Ready to jump into our last game of the day. And this one's going to be a very exciting one, Brad. And we're on to the best of one. Seeding games. Every team is qualified. And I guess I should preface this game before we even dive into it. Our team joining Portugal is Denmark. They won out uh, their game versus Romania. So they will be going to Riyadh. So congratulations, Denmark. And now they're going to be playing France for seeding. That is uh, an incredible result for them, but also means that IESF misses out on Anna, who is the best player in the world. True. She doesn't qualify. She is not there. That is a, a shock to me, but Team Denmark, they earned it. They had arguably one of the toughest sort of runs to even get here in the first place, uh, and they, they completely deserve it. I mean, what, what a talented team. Yeah, and it was a close game, actually, versus Romania, too. Uh, a 2-1 victory for Denmark. They actually got destroyed on dust, too, by Romania. Uh, I actually should bring up the scoreboard for that, because that feels like it's going to be a, a must class from Anna. You imagine 13-2, 25 kills, three deaths on Anna on that second map. But when it came to Nuke, the decider, well, a Danish stack on Nuke. What else can you say, right? 13-9 uh, to, to win out the series. So actually quite close there. And now that they've they've got the tough game out of the way, I mean, this game's probably going to be very hard, but they've got the one that was the most stressful out of the way. And now seeding, obviously, I mean, Denmark already know how important seeding is because they had a very rough uh, seed at this event and have had to do it the hard way. They've done it. So they'd love to win this game now and go into the finals at the end of the year not having to do it the hard way again. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I'm actually just taking a look at that nuke game. And it was Marie and it was Ismo that were both right up there at the top of the board. And then Ramsin was on 21 kills right behind them too. So uh, amazing to see. However, who topped the server? Anna. So that that's a, a bit heartbreaking, but uh, that that's the way it goes. But you're right, the pressure's off for this game. Uh, ultimately, it'd be great if you win this because then it, you're right, it does put you in a better position come Riyadh. However, you've got your ticket. You are there. That's the most important thing at, at this stage. And you can go into this with not too many stakes. You can just try and play your, your, your best form of CS and see where it takes you. And I think with the current form that they're in, Denmark should be taking this over Team France. I mean, I would have been in a different boat uh, had Spain not beat France. Uh, that that really kind of shifted the the, the whole storyline in my head because it really felt like to me that Team France were the best team here outside of Poland coming into it. I, I thought, yeah, Team France is going to be the team that's up there alongside Poland. That's going to be the, the kind of two best teams. Uh, Poland did just about get past Sweden. I'm, I'm not sure if they deserved it but they, they got there and uh france they faltered at spain so the two favorites kind of stumbling at the end and that's shown i guess just the level of competition overall and with spain beating france now i kind of do side with you a bit and think yeah denmark can definitely take this yeah no i think they can i think that the, the individuals are all just sort of performing as and when they need to and i think that's the that's the most important thing for this Denmark team is that everyone has sort of peaked at the right time. And it's not just a case of, I'd think comparatively to Portugal, we'll bring up the, the roster for Denmark, but comparatively to Portugal, it's like the whole way through this sort of tournament, everyone's been providing. It's not just been Ismo, it's not just been Marie Ramsey, it's been impeccable. Kit Kat and Anya have had their maps as well when you don't need to rely just so much on the carry. And that reminded me a lot of Team Portugal towards the very end of this qualifier. But Denmark have been doing it the entire way through. Yeah, Denmark have been such an impressive team. And uh, I'm really happy to see them find success here for, for so many different reasons, not just as, you know, their, their country and, and seeing this team find success, but there's just so many individual stories for the players here, right? You've got Ismo and Marie, who are obviously staying on as Astralis. Great to see them continuing that fantastic performance as we expect from them. We've got Kit Kat calling for this squad, obviously is taking over that new role in Astralis. So this being kind of her, her testing ground in, in the official capacity, really cool. Anya, a bit of a redemption, right? Having been benched, she's doing a bit of a, you know, a, a, sh a showcase of her skills. So, you know, she's still an available agent out there for the future teams. And then Ramson, who is unleashed on this AWP, which is giving us, again, a bit of a teaser, a bit of a taste of what to expect from NIP next season. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And I am very excited for that because if Ramson is unleashed and she is putting up this level, which... 
I kind of I knew she had it because when when we watched sort of Copenhagen Flames, uh, Copenhagen Shield Maidens, I should say, uh, sorry, at Gale Gamer, sort of like in in Suta in like 2022, like she was unbelievable, like absolutely unbelievable. Uh, again, she was IGL in there, but it was a, a similar storyline actually to this roster where she's kind of the um, older, more experienced player. And just looking after the younger generation of Denmark. That was her role in Copenhagen Flames Shield Maidens. This is her role in the Danish national team. And she's found success under both. So it's an interesting little parallel both between her career trajectory domestically and nationally. So that that's very cool to see. Uh, and you're right. The fact that she is now performing at such a level. If she is peaking now, right, with all these important events coming up. That is scary for a lot of teams. Yeah, no, and it's it's just really cool to see. You know, she's she's gone through a few different rosters, and they've, they've all been kind of on the brink of breaking through, right? And, and it feels like if she's hitting that peak form right now, that's gonna be enough for any team she's on, including Team Denmark, to just go the extra mile. And you know, when we look at this matchup, we look at the team they're against, Team France. You need your offer to be firing off against this team because this is a team stacked with talent. We've got. Obviously, K a day in terms of the orping prowess uh, for for everything she's done on FlyQuest Red uh, and taking the IGL role in that team most recently as well. So bringing that to the table. And then we've got uh, Julie bringing all of the experience. And I think what's been impressive from Julie, uh, we haven't covered France here on this week, but last week we covered them a couple of times in the group stage. And Julie has actually been, in many cases, their best performing player, which when you look at this team and you look at how stacked with talent it is, you're not thinking, okay, yeah, Julie's going to be top of the board. No offense to Julie. You, you're looking at Rachel, who was the highest rated player at ESL Impact. You're looking at Asher, who was pointing at 1.3 rating across the entirety of last year. You're looking at Emerald, who is this star that's just never really been in the right place at the right time to properly shine, but has all the talent. But no, Julie's been, been this phenomenal player for them and uh the fact that they've been on boot camp as well and they've had all this extra energy that comes with that it's been looking really good for them but they did falter to spain so they're not infallible how how does this work with both k a day and astra on the roster i'm assuming k a day's primary all yeah. yeah i mean you've got literally everyone can off on this team right emerald rachel i think they can both all too so you know uh but yeah k a day is primary okay that's fine i i just i think it's a bit it's a bit interesting the fact that we have got two players that are definitely orpers. Yes. <laughs> and you've decided to take them anyway. But I mean, it works because they've qualified, right? And and Astro is very good at, at rifling anyway. So I, that's the that's the trade off. Is that if you want a second orper uh, out of all of them, I guess you do take Astra. So that that's not that's not too bad whatsoever. I, I just that that's my only little real sticking point on that roster is that I feel like the roles could be a little bit muddled, but if they've got that all sorted, if they've been on boot camp, as you said, then they'll definitely iron that out. Yeah. But, uh, just an interesting thing that didn't, didn't come to mind before we jump into the veto is we will have, uh, everyone around them where we're teammates for a bit on, on flame shell me. And so, you know, we get them playing against each other, which seems to happen all the time. Wait, wait, let me, let me process this. It's uh, ancient. Production. There's bad. Oh yeah. Right. Sorry. I'm an <laughs> idiot. Uh, no, it's B01. B01. I was like, why are there so many reds? Is this a mistake? No, it's not a mistake, Brandon. It's ancient. Ancient is never a mistake. We're back to best of ones, which means it's nothing but ancient, guys. Yeah. Uh, no, I got you. Don't worry. Uh, you, you see that? Look, it's it's Nuke. It's Dude, I got so excited. It's... I saw Nuke and Vertigo as second, as third and fourth on this list. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. No, no, they're the bands. Yeah, uh, I know, actually, I you know. Look, if you look all the way over to the right-hand side with the trees, I know. <laughs> with Ancient, that's the map we're playing. Don't you know what? Don't Not get much. it twisted. It's Ancient. Um, who, who's surprised? Well, no one. I guess you are a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I'm not. Um, I, I really did. Cons I didn't expect this. Uh, where's this going now? I, I do favor Team France on this, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I I think that they're, they're really good on this map. I just with the players that they've got. I've said that with full confidence. I've not actually seen them play like all year. But with that being said, um, Astra, really good on Ancient. Uh, Rachel, under Letter Kirk, unbelievable uh, on Ancient. Um, everyone else, good on Ancient. Uh, that That's Ancient. That's Team France. I don't know what to say anymore. We've got I Ancient. Mean, I will say to Denmark that uh, they've definitely shown some good stuff on Ancient so far. That was the map where they should have beat Sweden in my books, where they, they just couldn't close it at the tail end, and Sweden just pulled out a few 
classic kind of Giuliano rounds that were enough to 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 win it. But uh, Denmark could have taken that map, so it's definitely a map that they're they're strong on, and I think it's it's the natural best of one map for both these teams because of that. So. I think we're going to get an exciting game. This isn't going to be a blowout. This is going to be very close between them, and we don't have to wait any further. We're into it. I'll change my mind. Team Denmark are winning. Is my go. Okay. It's true. Ismo is the goat. And they're on so T side. I, I think got a back team front. Yeah, yeah. We've got two I... letter cook players, and I'm still, you know. Paying recompense for my sins. I'll go against them. It's only their best map. It's fine. Um, I also think T side Team Denmark are going to have a better chance. If they started CT, I would have been more worried. Okay. France are ready for an A hit, but nothing's come. And they've pushed main. So Emerald's got the info, and that's going to allow rotations. But Denmark executing. Smoke's over. No one on the site. The USP not connecting, so they might get the space, and you imagine bombs should go down. The post line positioning into cave, pretty decent. Yeah, this is really nice. Sure, you've got the delayed lurk here from Emerald, but there's no utility whatsoever to get by this. And Denmark have got a couple of flashbangs that Ramsing can set up and support her team with. It all depends on how much Emerald can find with the dualies, and oh. nothing. Ismo gets one, but then she goes. Marie doubles up in her place. And Rachel gushed earlier. It's a three-piece from Marie. Finger looking good. Three-piece feed was a thing you could get. I know, I know. I was trying not to. I, I, I don't know why, but I was already trying hard not to laugh at it. And then I broke character. And then it was as I was about to like actually just let out the laugh. You've gone three pieces at KFC. It just started explaining the <laughs> you joke. You did to me. <laughs> you just left me out to dry. It's, just, it's because I didn't expect it from you because you're vegan. And yeah. you just made a KFC joke. That's, I think that's that's more what it was. Flashbangs forward. Zeus. Yeah, I didn't work. Oh no, she hasn't fired it yet. Or it's recharging. Okay. I forgot about that feature. I don't know anymore. Anyway, like Kit Kat's minute. dead. 30 seconds. Alright, you've seen two players in cave. Just just go somewhere where you can shoot guns from long range. You've got full donut, you've got A main. Should be a fine recovery. That was the the one scare, the one hiccup, but gonna be really hard to disrupt this and only lost the Mackie. And he's gonna make sure it stays safe. Oh, ah, ah, not a good time to reload. Oh, okay, it's all good. It's okay. Ramson's just got a USP, but let's not stress about that yet. He's most on the left, gets hers. Marie, of course. Oh. Very capable. Then for a double down on the triple. Maybe. Don't give her a Mac 10 kill Ramson. It's not worth it. Yeah. Don't do it. I just gotta go low. Oh. oh. Ramson's gonna this die, is, so. This is horrible. Actually awful. Oh, yeah, Ramson's dead. So that's kind of sucks for her, but she still has enough of the orb, so it's all good. Yeah. Not the end of the world. And we, we saw that when we were watching Denmark. Ramson never buys anything. Uh, apart from armor on the second round because she wants the orb always and forever. So she'll grab that. That's uncontested. No money for Kayade to afford that. She's gone A4. That's a, a rare A4 user in the midst. Love to see it. But for Denmark, I think we're going to might be going fast again over towards B. At least they want cave control. Boost up from Ramsin on the boxes and a leg. Not even a leg. A wall bang onto Kayade. 50 HP now for her. She's not going to be able to move from that position. Oh, nice nade. Uh, she falls off the angle. Just going to smoke defensively. Actually peeks ahead of it. Just a little tiny bit of damage on the Anya. I'm trying to catch him. There are four CTs on B. And you know what? That's going to work out for them for that first kill because there's no space elsewhere. Kayade on the wide swing. Removes Ramson's up. 
been a real poke and prod from both sides, but France, they're the ones that have come out ahead. It's going to be a really interesting matchup, this, because you've got France that are going to be really aggressive. You've got Asher, you've got Rachel that will just swing things. Kayade is known to get aggressive as well. And then for Denmark, it's really methodical. Their utility usage is normally quite sublime. So it's going to be a stylistic clash. It'll be interesting to see how it turns out. It, this will be a B finish. And no one from France has really moved. Emeralds rotated over towards A, sure. But there's still three defenders here. And there's only 30 seconds left. Well, he misses the mark. So Astra is actually fine right here. Doubling up with Rachel. Oh, that's fine. Even the long smoke well. missed too. So a bit of util off the mark. And that's going to cost them. Nice kill from Kit Kat. But Kade, yeah, <laughs> no issues on that line. Don't know if that missed utility, if that smoke does land long, if the molly does land in cave, whether it makes a significant difference, but definitely would have made their life easier. Oh well, yeah, it would have made it uh, a massive difference because Asher wouldn't have been in the corner. They would have planted four lot. They would have planted like four long in the bit where you don't get spam from cave, and we've been able to have after plants. And just as I've said, oh, the utility use of Denmark it's so sublime. They miss two key pieces and they lose the round. So not ideal from them. However. With that being said, Team France will take that all day long. Fight for mid. This is very fast with the Tech Nines. And Kit Kat and Ismo. They got the hero rifles. It is straight to A. Straight in. Emerald gets the first kill and still standing. Hasn't been run down just yet. And the time that she is able to pull out for her team is enough for KDA to arrive. Ismo's luck definitely heard. Bomb down, though. Play a disadvantage. And just the Tech Nine well gone now, in fact. You know, Ismo was in mid. Rachel just walks out at the perfect timing. So that one's too easy to deal with. Denmark go fast. And France. Hey, hold on. Yeah, that one was, uh, again, a little bit muddled there from Denmark. And it's because Emerald was staying alive for just a couple of extra seconds at the back box. They didn't feel comfortable when they put that bomb down. Ismo felt like she had to find something off the back of her lurk. She really revealed her position a couple of seconds prior, spamming in towards Rachel by cave. So she needs to progress. She needs to get the kill red or she needs to lock Rachel into cave. But where Rachel didn't reface, Ismo assumed that she rotated away. So it feels a little bit dicey. Even with the bomb plant, it's still going to be an eco out here for Denmark. And Team France, they can start to settle down a little bit now. Get back into the swing of things. Their flashes are a little bit crazy. It is what I'm looking at here. Because there's a number of flashes that Team France are throwing that are just kind of all over the place. Careful peeking into these deagles. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe you can just overpower them. One thing that's worth mentioning is that France is on boot camp, has been on boot camp for this entire qualifier. Obviously gives them a pretty nice little buff. Ramson. Can she make it too? Oh, an extra bullet in the chamber, and she actually still does get it. So, a couple for her, but that's it. Yeah, so not not the end of the world, to be honest, for, for Team France. Two kills it is fine. Anything more is, is that's where it starts to get a little bit more damage in. But Asher would be kicking herself just a little bit with the way that gunfight went right at the very end. But rounds are back on the AWP. Everything at their disposal, pretty much. There's a couple of missing pieces of utility for Marie and Ramsin, for example. But outside of that, it's a pretty decent buy here for Team Denmark. As they look to fight for the same control as they've been doing all map long. Double up in cave. They want to swing from Jaguar and they find success. Rachel pushes down at the same time. The smoke might not quite work out, but the kills do. Ramson can't get involved, has to run away with that bomb. Still two players in middle, and you feel like they need to take some space now that you've lost all his lane control. France are going to start to reset. Denmark don't have anywhere to go. This is really nice from France. I like the re-aggression here. Out and towards Jaguar. 
between Rachel and Astro, they've now just cleared all of B. It frees up Emerald to back out of Red Room, go and reinforce A, because it has to be two options here. Either Denmark have gone all the way in towards spawn and now heading A, or they're resetting in towards B outside the doors. But Denmark have to waste so much time clearing this, and in fact, Rams is going to telegraph their approach with a flash. 2-2 two -two split, so still favorable the numbers for Denmark. Flash over. Pretty nice. Marie in not hit by it, but Rachel able to get one and Rachel gets two. Rams in. We'll get the trade, but the flames are gonna slow her down. That's gonna give time for Emerald. Smoke will give some space for Rams in, but she's low HP and worried about this mid push. Now if she actually runs through middle, through donut, she actually has an open pathway to A. Not going to be heard, so she should be able to plant the bomb. And with the orb, there's a chance. If she plants here and now she peeks CT, she could hug the right hand wall and grab a kill. Instead, she's going to go on the left side, take her a much more passive angle. This margin for error is now basically minimal. She's the first one, lets the second go by. That's a great shot. And now it's Julie versus Ramsin. One bullet on this orb would do it, but one bullet in the M4 would also seal the fate. Julie has to cross into Ramsin. Shoulder spotted. Kill collected. What a clutch. Sick for Ramsin. Really well played as well. You know, you could see she had a decision there to make, right? When the flames run out, do I commit through it? And in fact, if that incendiary hadn't been thrown, Ramsin probably just goes on to B and plants the bomb. But she's forced to pause. And in that time, the rotation comes and she wants to get ahead of it. Knows it with low HP. If she tries to progress into B, even just getting the bomb down is going to be almost impossible. So she waits long enough for the rotation. Here's a flash on B. If you hear a flash by itself, you assume that that's setting someone up for a swing. So both players perfectly played by Ramsin. To add on to that as well, it's the decision when she sees the first player to let them go by. Fight for shelf again. Astra finds the opening kill. Ismo bested in round seven first. But Denmark want to recontest this. They want to fight through elbow and I'll try and deal with Astra. Again, flooding this control. When they fight for lane, they often find success. In towards middle, K8 to receive in Donut, and she takes them both in open, loving arms. This one's a bit tougher for Ramsin, it's got to be said. You try and save for a minute with an orb, you know, it's worth it, but it's, it's not fun. <laughs> no, this is going to be uh, a very long minute. I guess 45. She's just going to look at the floor and hope that Team France just don't come in the doorway or they're allowed about it. So she can just spring up, take the kill, and then look straight back down at the floor. But she's managed to survive half the time. <laughs> she's got another 25. <laughs> if they were going to hunt, they would have walked through here by now. So uh, they she might should... have time. That's true, actually. Yeah, they could just after time that would be sad you've spent a minute sitting behind this but oh the scope the herd i don't know or she just ran away she's good yeah she's good oh okay oh survives but no one else has money and now she has no money either right zero dollars to her name. Uh, Denmark needs to probably try going A main or heavy fighting for middle a lot earlier because it's the shelf control that is really allowing Team France to win just the majority of the early like opening stages of the round. And then as a result, Denmark needs to play reactive CS rather than proactive because once they have the map control, they're completely fine. But getting that has been difficult in itself. Imagine we might see Rams in boosted. Oh, she actually has a spawn to go mid, so yeah, maybe takes that instead. 
Gotta try and do something with this AWP. Fires it off. I <laughs> saw so, Marie looking at the floor where the nade lands like, <laughs> why? Why is it landed right there where I'm standing? Who throws that? Oh, that smoke is brutal. That timing is so good. Kit Kat's been jumping, trying to bait in Astro just to kind of jiggle this to allow Ramsen to do this. All right, there's a chance Astro is on the line. Yeah, needed to be instant, and that's a really difficult shot to hit on the jiggle. That's going to force out the smoke. Two players, or three players in sight, sorry. So everyone here for France to lock this down. We could try and walk over Flood Donut. Maybe the easiest avenue to get a bomb down, actually. So this could work, but two players present. It's going to have to be an overwhelm. And I don't think, yeah, with K a day in that position, there wasn't going to be a way in. Ram's in. Maybe you just want to survive again, and that's not going to be allowed. Didn't really impress with K a day on a rifle in. That's uh, that's a positive to take away from this game as well. I haven't, I haven't seen her be this proficient on a rifle in quite a long time. So clearly putting a lot of work in over the break. I mean, look, this one is against Ecos, but just in general, her rifle in play has been uh, pretty good. Now we get to see her sniper rifle in play. Perhaps it's not a eagle. So, it's all sad for her. Two rounds where she had the AWP and couldn't really get much done. Cave Smoke was thrown by the T's, but they didn't fight for middle or, or that lane really. They've played it patiently, wanting to retake this space. Nice flash. Marie finding the opening kill, but Astra then re swings in from cave to find another. Trying to now spam through the wood as well, but Denmark have made it out of elbow at the very least. Emerald now trying to chime in, but Marie holding once more. Kayade wants another bite of the cherry, but suddenly it's a missed shot, but she still takes one to the grave with her. That's A open, and somehow, some way, Team Denmark have got the player advantage. Yeah, they've actually managed to really make this round into something. Very huge double, and with Rachel and Astra so far removed, and I mean, there's a lot of money. They'll probably walk towards ledge, and if they can see an opportunity to get a kill, that's a way into it, but they're not being gifted anything. There's no lurk present here, no one active in middle that's going to give up that fight. Exits. The aim of the game, keep the economy of Denmark humble. Oh, that's a good start. Rachel was spotted. However, she does get one. Ismo's got the AWP. Astra could deny this. Oh, could have. Should have, but didn't. Ismo AWP diff. I don't think that was an Ismo AWP diff. I think that was <laughs> Astra whiffing the whole magazine diff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> They're out from Denmark there. A to be tested. K they throws deep molly. A to Marie again cops that one. Smoke. Annoying. They were just about to swing. Oh, actually, walk through. K day. 
oh, it's a little wild. Warning shots for Kit Kat, who scrambles out of there. That is ambitious to do that for Kit Kat. But I don't hate it, weirdly. She catches K a day, a bomb site feels uh, a lot weaker. Instead, for Team Denmark, the only control they've already got is, well, nowhere. So they're going to go back to this mid setup where Marie was able to get two openers before, use exactly the same nades, and hope that they can profit with Ismo lurking, holding B. But check out Emerald, who's already walked through A main. Yeah, and with this aggression off Heaven, you're just not going to be at all thinking about this, this position. Yeah, Emerald, that's perfect. Oh, it is perfection. Shine bright. Ransom's again left in an impossible situation. One kill. And the flashbang actually almost sets her up for another, but she has no bullets. Another gun on the ground. Ooh, further damage, but the push down from Julie locks it in. But that round is all Emerald. Yeah, uh, and even if she hadn't got all three of those kills, you did have KDA right behind her. And that's the aggression of France. And... This was is probably very much influenced by Rachel and Astra on Ladder Cook, because this is what they were doing, just all ESL impact for the playoffs. Just walking through, getting these sort of almost random timings that don't feel random. It's because you've just seen presence there over at A main and you've rewalked the issue. After you've heard contact at B, it was really well timed. But that's a sixth. And now with Denmark with no money, this could be seven five eight four. Gonna give B a go, but reinforced. And flashbang, good shot, also great. But Astra goes for a massive triple kill, and that's enough to lock down. Son of a Marie, if she gets this dig, now you've got space. Now you've got something to work with. To A, go. Every single time Team Denmark need a bailout, they find the A bomb site vacant. So now that's a smoking towards CT. That's the bomb down at the very least. Uh, and suddenly, if you're Astra and Julie, you have got time to try and retake this. You have got kits. There is a smoke. There is a world. Because they found the one gap in which Team Denmark are not looking at. Yeah, uh, Ransom's only got a Deagle. Marie, she's got an MP9. No armor either, so... Not planted for Marie in this position. A smoke available as well to go onto the bomb. Spotted one player. Ransom's just forced to spam. Swing! Oh, that could have been it if Marie had been able to get that timing. Just protecting the, the, the bomb defuser and that's enough. <laughs> That almost gets out of hand, though. Yeah, it, it does. And it nearly comes at the hands of Ramsin as well by Big Box. Julie's just running in front of Astra just to make sure that she doesn't die. Protect the defuse. And it does come in. With that extra bit of money, though, with that plant for the final round of play in this first half, Team Denmark can get the AWP out once more. Interestingly how, you know, we talked to this big conversation about France's all being prowess and it's in the K-Day all, I think, out once, really. France has been prioritizing it a lot on the T side. Double aggressive push in A main, but that's where the bomb is. Emerald swinging. Falls to the AWP. Ismo catches Rachel, and they're going to try and split, but K-Day was undetected. She never fired off, and Julie in the donut lies in wait. Denmark think they find the space, find the gap, but it's all a ruse, all a bait, and it's all France, 8-4. That's a tilter. Uh, that is, like, you get both of those kills. You never saw K-Day after you cleared A main with that push. And then you're not ready for Julie, who's just in the most uncomfortable off angle on Donut I think I've ever seen in my life. And she still managed to get two kills. Insane output from Team France. They get eight rounds. And uh, another thing here is that, sure, 
is a seeding match. Sure, it's a best of one. Both these teams want to win. Think about the journey that Denmark have been on today, where they've had to play this best of three. They then have a, a free map affair against Romania. They're able to win it out. The adrenaline goes through the roof. They've qualified, and then they've got to come right back down to then play a BO1. Whereas for France, this is only their BO1 of the day. But somehow, some way, these USPs have won it out. Team France were holding for this push, and Ismo has still found two kills. Ismo is just a pistol demon. What can you say? She's playing with it, but they have managed to fight back control. Now, if they committed to A, it would have been trouble for France, but instead... Oh, this is weird. Can oh, that's been heard. Middle? Okay, yeah. So Rachel's going to move back. Reasonary to CT, and if you're France, surely one of moving B side, but they might actually walk no. into Denmark, who are doubled up in Donut. Kick cap falls. So you're ready for two more players to be here. Marie runs away. And now they're gonna bail. Yeah, Petty finally drops. You've already killed two players there. You've heard Kit Kat running back towards Donut. You've just thrown your smoke in towards CT. You can go through mid, but that's only to scale in towards Cave. They, they shouldn't have taken that Donut fight, but still, they, they got a kill out of it. So, I mean, why not? Judy now plants the bomb. The wide swing out of Rachel deletes Marie, and suddenly Anya's left all alone. Beautiful double swing. Anya went and grabbed the kit, but don't fancy her chances. H-E, ouchie. Nice first kill. Now she has the second. We're talking something. But the USP is not quite connecting for her. And now, when she peeks around this corner, there should be some decent double layering. Tap on it. Trying to beat them out. Julie gets her fourth in the round. A big pistol from her. There's that impact. Yeah, 13 and 4. Um, but to be honest, that's a really nice try from Anya. Uh, I really like the way she approached that. If she was able to get that second kill on long, that makes things a lot easier. But she manages to scale in towards the site. She fakes out the defuse. She tries to kill the player on cave and spin around. There was a world in which she could potentially try and stick that plant or at least force Team France into making another mistake that, that could have led to their demise, but not to be. So a full eco, this gives over 10 rounds, basically, to the French. That's kind of fun. Aggressive play out uh, aiming with flashback. Marie actually catches up Julie, but Emerald should collect a couple. There's presence everywhere. Rachel. As long as her, Mackie. SMG kills nice for Marie, but. Oh. Hichi almost actually would have caught Emerald perfectly. Okay, hold that. Ramson has dropped the bomb, but now it should be all good, and the long-range Heechee locks it in. Easy does it. This has to be the difference maker now for Denmark. Otherwise, we are looking at uh, a letter cook special, really. And I was always worried when this went to Ancient. Not for just Lucy's sanity, but... <laughs> For, for the fact that France, I knew, would be incredibly good on this map. Uh, yeah, we, we are definitely seeing it. Yeah. Denmark had to do a comeback versus Sweden. They almost pulled it off, so might be able to do it here against France. Walked out early. They're actually going to respect the smoke. Denmark have nothing on the other side. France are happy to take their time. Triple layering of players on the site. Imagine in France are probably just going to hit it out the gate now they're in position. So it says fake smokes. Astra faking. Has drawn a third rotate over. In fact, a fourth. Only one player, Kit Kat. And now she just push straight into Rachel with that MAC-10. Now the smokes have come down. That was played perfectly. Yeah, and a little bit of inexperience it feels to Denmark there. Biting down on that one. 
We have no other information to go off. That's because they were playing in the dark, holding such passive angles that they had no info. They didn't gather it anywhere on any kind of point in the map. They didn't even really have the mid presence. Playing in the dark, you are going to feel that as soon as contact comes, you got to go. As they're all being picked apart here and attempted to retake. I'm saying it's interesting for a moment, but France yet to falter on the T side. Here's your decision now. Are you playing for OT if you're Denmark, or are you going to invest? That's the decision that they are making with this pause. 30 seconds to talk about it. And I, I think investing is the right decision. I don't think playing for, for OT is uh, good, a good idea. So they're going to go all in. Famous is. It's kind of ironic. They're using the French weapon against the French. But... That's all they've got. That's all that's all they can afford. Needed that pistol, didn't they? That would have been the kickstart to get them rolling into the comeback. Now it's much like their bracket run here. Got to be done the hard way. Krieg for Rachel. I feel like we saw that. At uh, an impact, right? Yes, we did. I saw Emmy doing it constantly. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no one liked that. <laughs> She's good with it. I'm not talking about it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Rachel, it's um, whilst well, it's an alternative to a scope, like an orb, but it's it's in her hands. So France are in know. France are she... in Denmark spawn. Yeah, that's true, actually. How did you let that happen? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to cut you off, but I looked at the map. I was like, oh. They just walked through mid. They walked through the mid smoke and they didn't slow down. Ramsey has dealt with Julie, though. So that is a good start. This retake needs to be a success, but they've got no kits. That's the danger. But at least they've got the player advantage. Astro, though, finds Ismo. Rachel boosted up with this Krieg. Swings in from CT and is able to find Kit Kat. And even more, Rachel and the Krieg does enough. Provides enough of a distraction. And France are up to map and series point. Yeah, Emma with a double there as well. That's big from her. But Ismo was the one that was really uh, the most important. As soon as she falls, a main is completely safe and you can... Really focus your attention onto side, onto Donut, and that's exactly what they do. All crosshairs aimed in that direction. That actually felt very Letter Cook esque in terms of getting yes. all that space. Like they just didn't stop moving through middle, even if they were shifting, they just walked in. They catch a perfect timing and exploit it to perfection. <laughs> that was so Letter Cook. That really was. Uh, Anya finds the opening kill, and that's going to force France to go in towards B immediately, though. Until set, on to B. Here's Smoke fighting forward. That Smoke giving her confidence, and she even gets away. Marie gets hers. Kaden, Astra, 2v5. Kit Kat's still here. Spam doesn't deny the bomb, and oh, gets the dink, though. That should be enough. Yeah, it will be enough. Okay, there's nothing to work with here, and Marie pushes up ramp. So Denmark finally getting their first CT round. Yeah, uh, finally, but you still need to win seven in a row. And currently, I can't see that happening. France will invest in. They'll have Mac 10. Julie's got an AK. Astro, in fact, this buy is really good. I didn't expect it to be as rifle intensive as it is. But no, that's quite significant. Double up in mid. Astra, oh, the timing on that is perfect. And Emerald comes over the top exactly as the contact comes through from Astra. She goes down after one, does enough damage for Emerald to finish the job, and then she just scales. Sitting in Donut is going to be an absolute pain, and France have so much time to work with. This fight takes place in the first 20 seconds. B is now incredibly lightly defended. Ridiculous. Ismo, though, could, oh, and should, find Emerald. 
That cuts the map in half now for France, and it leaves them with limited options. They need to go into B. Good timing on this smoke from Kit Kat. She can delay things further. But Rachel is walked through cave, and Kayla just walks through the smoke. Ramson drops the bomb. They weren't expecting this play along. Not ready on that rotation timing. Needed that second. Can't get it done. Ismo is going to have to be the one. They know where each other is, just based on that utility. Good HE, actually. Puts them both on equal footing. 89. With AKs in hand, knocking them out of too much. Julie can pick up the bomb. Ismo. In a good position. Julie. Oh, the timing just as Ismo moves off the angle. That's when Julie starts to make her own moves. Flash forward. Okay, she's just going to be like, I'm telling you exactly what I'm doing. I'm flashing and I'm running at you. Fine. Ismo is in a really good spot here. Don't plant there. Oh my god. Why would you plant there? That doesn't make any sense, but Julie's not punished for it. Ismo knows exactly where she is. So does Julie. This swing decides everything. Julie actually disengages, goes CT into temples, going all the way around the world. Ismo's got a smoke and a kit. She could stick it. Could do. Hasn't even deployed the smoke yet. Not quite sure where Julie has got to. And... Julie, walking around, is going to lock this in. There it is. France, 13-5. Win out the best of one. We'll have much better seating than Denmark. But for Denmark, they're still going to Riyadh. But it'll be a bit of a difficult fight there as France, Poland, Spain will all have higher seating. Yeah, um, look, it, it, it's one of those, right? It's just, it's a seeding game. I don't think you're going to take too much away from this, apart from Ancient is scary. Uh, don't play it on Team France. And uh, all of this qualifier, I've learned teams like Mirage, teams like Anubis, teams like Ancient, maybe we should learn something else for the actual event, guys. I, I hope so. I hope we see that. And and the teams that do embrace that deeper map pool are going to have a much bigger advantage. I, I think this is where teams like Poland should be flexing that. And they should be trying to target and play maps like Nuke, Vertigo, really anything other than these maps. Inferno, we did see from them. So I think that that's signs that they're happy to take it there. And even that, I think, has just enough extra tactical depth that you can win out against teams that have a more loose style and haven't got that kind of five players playing together all the time outside of it. Yeah, uh, basically that. I mean, for Denmark, the, the most important match was last match. Beating out Romania, booking their spot in Riyadh in the first place. This does not matter. It just means you got a little bit of a harder run, but hey, they did it already uh, as you said in the qualifier so why not just have history repeat itself in Riyadh it's such a good experience for all of these players I hope that uh, a lot of teams actually do end up boot camping before this we have seen mm. Spain do it we've seen France do it I hope other countries will do that before the main event as well yeah just got confirmation as well uh Portugal beat Sweden in the best of one and it wasn't even that close it was a 13-7 win on Anubis and that was with Yun topping the board but Sana wasn't that far behind either so yeah good to see Portugal continuing that incredible run of form they've really recovered uh, after that close game versus Slovakia so still games to play Brandon but that's all for today we have uh the three best of ones I think coming up tomorrow to decide the final Seeding, so Spain versus Poland, Portugal versus France, and then the loser of Spain versus Poland versus the winner of Portugal, France. Yeah, so, so it sounds right. Uh, but yes, uh, that will take place tomorrow. But for now, thank you very much for everyone watching today. Uh, congratulations to both Denmark and Team Portugal for qualifying through. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good rest of your evening. Take care, and we'll see you real soon.